Hey guys, it's Greek here, and I am with Novadez, and I'm excited to be here today. This is going to be awesome. We're going to sit here and talk about the uh, trailer a little bit frame by frame, our thoughts and theories and everything. Greek and I will probably overlap one another because this is going to be just very raw, um, us just talking. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, man. Um, Battlefield 1. What do, you, what do you think of the name to start with? You know, that's something we haven't talked about, actually. You know, I, you know, some people were saying that Battlefield 1, they're like, oh, it's 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 not a unique name. Or they're saying, like, well, why not Battlefield 5? And, you know, honestly, it feels like it's a return back to form for me. And, you know, honestly, when you look back at all the, the history of the Battlefields that, you know, you saw on Twitch, there is no title named Battlefield 1. We had Battlefield 2, but we never had Battlefield 1. Yeah, exactly. And, and Battlefield 2 was actually Battlefield 3, so that didn't even make sense. But I think Battlefield 5 would remind people too much of, like, the modern age. And I don't know. And it was it was back. I know somebody hinted at a name that it should have been maybe, like, Battlefield the Great War. But then when you think about it, it's better for, like, Twitter, like, when you're typing it out, just say BF1, you know? BF1 not- sounds like a really strong title, so... It does. And it's I'm, like, trying to type out some long name. I'm sure, like, the DLC will be, like, the Great War, and I think... There was something leaked. Of course, obviously, we're not going to talk about it, but there was something leaked about in a DLC expansion. I don't even know if that's true or not, but, mm-hmm. you know, you never know. Yeah. It's probably going to be some battles across various uh, countries that'll, that'll be the DLC, but we'll see. Well, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, you want to get back, get into the trailer? We're pretty much, we're not going to go frame by frame. We're going to be different. We're going to talk about theories and we're going to go back and obviously everyone's doing a frame by frame. So we're going to try to be different and talk about like our trip and like things that we know that hopefully we can uh, share to you guys. Yeah, exactly. So let's just um, watch it once and then go back uh, to a few certain things where we want to talk about. All right. Sounds good. Peggy 18. Play it first on Xbox One with EA Access. Oh, that that trailer never gets old. And like, what are the stats of it now? It's like something insane where it's It should be by 20 million views by now. And uh, I think it's creeping up to 1 million likes. It might have already hit that. I don't know. Probably has. And then I I tweeted out Randy today. uh, Right. I know you told me his name yesterday. Yeah. Um, I tweeted him out and said, seriously, that is one of the best trailers I have ever seen video game wise. Yeah, it's crazy. I think it's number 12 uh, in like all videos of YouTube uh, to hit that certain amount of likes in 24 hours. It's number That's 12, insane I think. insane to think about. I yeah. mean, EA really went all out with that one, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's crazy. I was going back today actually comparing to the likes of the uh, Battlefield 4 announcement and stuff. And this yeah. is like double it. It's insane. Jeez, which means, could you imagine? I know one thing we didn't talk about yesterday was that what, what is this going to mean for Nova? You know, what is this? How is this going to pack montages and everything? I don't know. What are your thoughts on it, dude? Well, I think it looks like the entire world is is hyped for this game, so it's going to bring a lot of new people into the scene as well in terms of videos, probably. Yeah. Maybe even cop people that are going to switch over. Um, but, uh, dude, we're going to poop out montages every single week. <laughs> I know, I know. Everyone's like, we're just going to like throw out content like crazy. I, you know what I think what's great about this game is that um, it's more cinematic. I know we we were talking about how, I mean, obviously we're not going to try to leak anything because Greek and I know a lot more than we than because we were at the, the actual event. But I can say that the animations and things that are going to occur um, are going to lean towards more epic montages. Yeah, definitely. There's a few things that'll make it just so much more realistic and like you're actually part of what you're doing, which is really cool. 
it'll feel like a movie and like you know be if i think that's the edge that it has over call of duty is that it already feels a lot more cinematic in general oh yeah and the the melee combat as well uh plays into that is that it just makes it feel so much more like personal and like raw so that's that's pretty cool should we go back to um i guess 57 seconds in the in the trailer sure yeah you know the one thing i, I always i want to say about this moment in the trailer is that the whole world war one is such a everyone keeps not really bashing it but i guess they don't know a lot about the war compared to like world war ii and world war one this is yeah it's not as well documented it's uh, not a lot of people know about it unless you like actually research it and you know there's a lot of people who are extremely into it and we see it like on reddit when everyone's posting like how they found out about the trench coat which is pretty insane on reddit you know just based on that one short like split second of a teaser yeah it's crazy what people do with that and then, like, but this moment when he's looking up at the at the Zeppelin, like, this is huge. It kind of shows, like, what we're going to be getting as far as Battlefield 1. And based on, like, what we saw is that a lot of the technology is very new to everyone. Everything came as a shock, you know, whenever tanks are rolling out, uh, Zeppelins are rolling out. And that's what we kind of see horses and everything kind of come into play with uh, with this game. And, you know, based on what I've seen, like, gameplay-wise, it really holds true just to kind of the shock value and just, like, how much you see on the battlefield, you know, and just how brutal it is. And it's just, man, it's, it's impressive. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But you just look at the size of the Zeppelin compared to the guy standing under it. Like it's going to be absolutely massive. As they said on the, at the event, um, they've never built such big vehicles as the Zeppelin and the, the warship and, and all that. So it's, it's going to be absolutely insane. And they took a lot of time designing the maps. I know, um, we were kind of told that, you know, I mean, this is just naturally that's what's going to happen. And, you know, BF4 was known for uh, evolution and everything like that. And now, like, they're taking it one big step further. And, you know, with Battlefield 1, like, everything will be destructible. And I know you made a point. We were, Greek and I were kind of talking a lot yesterday what we should talk about. Like, how is it going to work? Is it going to be now player initiated or is it going to be like the same same thing like we saw in bf4 i don't i don't remember what you what you had said about it or what your thoughts were yeah i think and i hope as well at the same time is that they're going to step away from evolution um and make it more as how bat company 2 was where it's like everything is destructible and then, then they take the micro destruction from uh battlefield 4 as well and like kind of renew that hopefully because I don't know, man. Levolution was a, a good selling point at first, but I think they all realized that um, it, it could ruin some maps as well, because you basically have to design two maps at that point for something like Siege of Shanghai or Flat Zone. It completely changes the map once the Levolution event hits, and I think it's very difficult to create two really good maps in one. That's true. I remember you did say that. And like, what if the map before the Levolution was way was better designed than the actual Levolution that happens? Like, like you said, flood flood zone where like all of a sudden the wall, all the water's flooded and it just becomes a big, a big pain. I mean, that's kind of why they redid the whole map to begin with. I remember in BF4 whenever it started, it was like, yeah, you had all the water there, but man, was it a pain to get to those MCOMs? Yeah, exactly. It, it wasn't the most fun map at that point. So. And the same was for a Siege of Shanghai, it just became so so dusty and you had no, I don't know, you couldn't really see far and I didn't really like that as much, but, so I hope they're going to step away from the evolution and, and focus more on like the actual, like the useful destruction and the destruction that's actually going to immerse you into the, into the battlefield, that would be cool. And I know they did say how much time they were taking to the maps, and it makes me really curious at how large scale they're going to make it. Like I was, I remember we had talked about, um, are we, are we going to be able to parachute off of like a Zeppelin or something into the battlefield and like how sick that would look? Like when you come from there, just imagine how much of the field you're going to see. Like, oh my gosh, you know? It's going to be huge. Um, I lost my train of thought. That's all right. <laughs> but, you know, whenever the, like the whole viewpoint, like all the maps, like I think they're going to be... I, I know... People are going back and forth whether or not they should be 64 or they should lower the number or just have better designed maps. I posted, I remember I posted on the forums a few days ago whenever they posted the new ones at Battlefield and everything. Um, a very big point, like, I personally love the chaotic nature of 64, man. Like, I want that. But I also don't want it to be, like, Locker and Metro where it's just, like, a cluster of just, like, a mess. You know what I mean? And I remember you had a, I don't know if you had a pretty valid point about you know, 42 or a uh, lower number as well. Yeah, I like I like the 32 and 48 uh, for Rush anyway. I like that for Rush because it's not as... Um, well, that's the point with Battlefield 4. Most of the maps on Rush are very linear 
and you can't really have like great flanking routes or anything because everything is very linear and like straight to the point so I hope that well that's another thing I hope that they cater certain maps towards certain game modes and that you're, you can't play every map on every game mode because that's it's just very hard to make one map that suits every single game mode and plays well in every single game mode. I've never you, seen you know, that work. So, And they did try in Hardline. I think they gave it a good test run. And honestly, without Hardline and Battlefront, I know people bash those games so hard, but a lot was learned from EA and Visceral, just in general, about what we like and what we want. Because, you know, they tried doing the whole maps with, like, very... Like, they did it differently. In Hardline, they had all the game modes on one map, and then they would just kind of close off areas or do it a certain way. And then Battlefront, they tried taking the same map, but, like, putting it in completely different areas altogether. And it's like they were completely testing how things would happen in Battlefield 1, like what works best, you know? Yeah, they, I think that's they even added two older, or or more, I don't know, at, at least two um, World War II or World War I weapons to Hardline, so it was obvious that, you know, they were testing those and let's see how people like them, I guess. It's true, like like the gas in Hardline, and then we see it in World War I setting, it's all, it all like, it all comes together. It was. It almost feels like it's like a Joker. It was all part of the plan. And like and, and like Greek and I can't confirm whether or not it's true. We're just we're sitting here speculating. But even like with with like the bullets from like Hardline, like I guess how um they affect the choppers and everything. Because you know back in World War One, we didn't have like all the RPGs in the world. A lot of stuff was taken down by just sheer massive bullets. Yeah, that's very true. Because the armor wasn't very. You know, it was all. How do you say that? Um weak um, yeah it was all very know. weak and yeah, like yeah. Just, it was new yeah exactly i mean the tanks were slow as hell <laughs> yeah that well that's the thing i i worry about but i think they're gonna make it pretty fast they, they seemed relatively fast in the trailer like at the um, i don't know is that a 20 i don't know 27 seconds go back let's see here 27 yeah oh 27 yeah well, the seconds. horses look at look how intense it looks just like a yeah well, there's a shot. This is shot before that. It seems like that tank is pretty, pretty damn rapid. So, oh, it's true. And of course, in that shot, we get a sniper rifle. You know, yeah, and that's dad's in the sniper rifles. That's my baby right there. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's important. It's it's an actually interesting because it has a bipod on it. So that would mean that they at least they they are taking uh, a few attachments from BF4 and implementing them in BF1, which is which is good. So, I know we saw a little bit of gameplay. Um, you know, I didn't see, and honestly, when I think about it, I didn't see a lot of attachments, but that doesn't mean that they aren't there, because obviously they're here in the trailer. Like, I remember we saw a lot of guns, like a shotgun. I mean, obviously, this is stuff that everyone kind of already knows at this point, like guns that are available. But I know we kind of saw, like, a sniper rifle, and oh my gosh, the satisfaction whenever you shoot somebody in the head when I saw it happen. Yeah, ooh. definitely. I, oh I love gosh. that the scope is on the side as well. That was really odd, actually, you know, seeing that. I thought that was kind of weird. It makes me curious if you could kind of switch from both an iron sight to a to a scope, kind of both in the same time. You know, kind of like in in BF4. You know how you can kind of switch from both or have two options. Yeah, definitely. Something else that is pretty interesting. Um, I'm gonna research if I if we can actually put this in the video. Um, but <laughs> if we can, then I'll just cut this out. What is very interesting is that um, on the clip we saw on the uh, on the other trailer that they didn't show online is that when he zoomed in with the sniper rifle. The okay, so basically in one of the other Call of Duties or most Call of Duties, I think when you zoom in, there's not a black screen around your scope. It's actually blurred. That's what they do in Battlefield One as well. So it's two times. It's like double rendering or whatever, and you have a blurred outside of the scope. Like you have the you have a blurred vision, which is I think it's it's really awesome. That's that's a really good point. I didn't even think yeah. about that. That's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, that's that changes it definitely. And you know, based on the trailer and everything, I know we we kind of heard an RN, but you can tell like the sound effects are gonna come back true to form. You know, like man, I I am just so blown away by by the delivery of this and just like what we're going to be getting. Yeah, definitely. What they also said is um on the on the live stream itself is that you can put five people in one tank. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I remember you saying that. That is sick. And, you know, they made such a big point about team play. And we really, really see it in this trailer, like, about... Obviously, we're, I know people's concern for World War I is that everyone's in the trenches. And everyone yet is team play. Everyone's just kind of sitting there waiting for stuff to happen. But it looks like they're making a big change to making things a lot more aggressive and making things, like, a big push. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. No, it isn't I would just going to be trench warfare. 
No, that's the thing, because World War One, um, if you know the other the other game, Verdun, by uh, yeah. two or three Dutch uh, brothers, they made that game. Um, it's all trench warfare, and while it is fun, it gets boring pretty fast. So, and of course, World War One wasn't just trench warfare. It was a lot more than just trench warfare. Like you see in the desert, the Arabian Desert, or whatever it is. Um, it's wide open landscapes and in the, the Alps and whatever and the Italian mountains and and all that so that's true I mean we saw I know the the, tra the trailer we saw because it, it, it's obviously in this trailer but the gameplay trailer we saw as well like when we saw gameplay it was like it was in the jungle and because we did see that in trailer so it kind of went hand in hand so it's not like we're spoiling anything but that looked pretty uh close quarters which is kind of neat to see you know yeah definitely well that's what I think is pretty good about this game as we know it so far is that there's going to be a variety in like really close quarter maps like the trenches but then also have the the wide open desert and the um and the alps and all that so you know one thing we didn't see in both and you mentioned it beforehand you were asking i was like we should save that for the video was um is there going to be any winter maps oh yeah exactly yeah i i don't think we've seen any there was a there was a shot at let me let me find it real quick um with the tank rolling out it is at because I wonder if we're going to get the same kind of like um, rain effects or weather effects. I'm sure they're going to put that in there, but yeah. I wonder to what extent. Because we see it in the trailer where there's, there's some like a rain, lot of rain there. Yeah. 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 And I wonder how much the weather is going to come into effect, you know? Yeah, definitely. You can see at 37 seconds, there's the tank rolling out. And at first I thought, wait, that's a snow map. But it's not. It just seems like that because the sky is very white at the background. Oh, very in blue, the background. yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's not a snow map. But I hope there's going to be a snow map because the variety like that is is so key to keeping things fresh all the time. So it's very true, and the graphics look so on par. And I can oh, tell man. based on what we've seen that this game is going to run really smooth right off the bat on a beta. Oh yeah, well Dice always manages to do that is make the games very visually appealing, but also make them run really well on like any system, which is quite yeah, impressive. Like, so. Hardline and Battlefront have to be some of the best running games for like SLI and uh, yeah, exactly. just FPS wise in general, and looking fantastic. And Battlefront and, is like one of the most visually pleasing games ever. It's it's ridiculous, and it runs so good. Yeah. It's it runs my gosh that game runs so well yeah and it, it, even I mean, in consoles <laughs> true and, and you know it makes me I know people always go back to Battlefield Four and they're like oh I had a bad launch but I think EA really learned from that I think so too Hardline had a pretty had a pretty good launch actually and Battlefront was pretty much flawless so in terms of that I think they definitely learned from that and um, the beta is going to be is I don't know when it is I don't think they announced a date for it yet but. There's going to be a beta which you can sign up for on uh, the insider page of battlefield.com. So that should yeah, be interesting. Yeah, we recommend everyone do that actually. Like, we yeah, may definitely. Put a link in the description that yeah, for sure. sign up for the beta. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to get my hands on this game, man. Seriously, I know they're doing a, uh, a gameplay reveal on June 12th. I'm not sure if we're going to go to that, but um, it's supposed to be a lot more low key and smaller. So the gameplay is coming, kind of what we saw to the general public on June 12th. I know they said they're making a lot of revisions, so. That sounds exciting. I'm very pumped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, let's skip towards the next uh, thing we wanted to talk about, which is uh, 40 seconds, uh, I think. 40, what was it? It was 42. 42? It was, um, what did we see here? The train, wasn't it? Oh, the train. That's the train. right. We saw a train yeah. in here. And then, of course, right below the screen before it was the uh, flamethrower. Yeah, also very exciting. But that's, I mean, we see a, a wide variety of vehicles in, in this game. We got trains, we got uh, we got planes, and we've warships. And it, it, I know that they tweeted out, like, right after the trailer, it's going to be like rock, paper, scissors. Not one can win the battle, you know? Meaning you got aircrafts, you got you got sea, and then you got land, you know? Yeah, that's very good. What, what I think of the, what, what do you think of the train? How it's going to be implemented into the game? You know, at first I thought it was just honestly going to run over people. <laughs> <laughs> but then you, you said yesterday that people will be able to shoot out of it and it could be a way to get to where you want to go a lot faster. And I found that fascinating, you know. Like, yeah, because there's a big, big freaking gun on, on the front of that train. So what oh, I no, that's right. Yeah, what I thought is that maybe if you cap a certain on Conquest, that would be, of course, um, or any game out like that. If you cap a certain... Um, 
like area on the map you get you, you get control of that and then the train comes rolling out and you can somehow get onto it and get that for like a i don't know half a minute or something to drive around that would level. be kind of neat like having yeah. strategic points yeah exactly on the map you know like if you if you got this and you would have control of the dam and then that would spawn boats for you or something like that you know that would be a really nice addition to conquest i mean they kind of have it a little bit they were like a little you, bit with the with the warship the um, ac-130 yeah but, um, but this is like taking it a whole nother step further, you know? Yeah, definitely. That will make the gameplay a lot more interesting as well because it switches it up. It switches it switches it up. Um, which side has control of what? Which is pretty cool, I think. And then when we go to thirty one seconds, what did you say you saw in the background here about the? Uh, was it the guns? Yeah. So we're, when you see the mustard gas, if you um, look towards the right, there is actually uh, two old cannons there. Which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, I think that might be the new version of like a Tau missile, like in BF4. So it's a fixed position, and you can use it. To, well, in this case, take down, uh, take down like a what is it actually? A tomb or? I don't know what this is, and I don't know where it's at. It, I mean, obviously we're in, in Europe at this point, but look how destructible it is too. Yeah, that's because I mean, I, this part you can say is probably in-game footage. I'm not quite sure actually on this. Uh, yeah, this is 100% in-game footage. I mean, you know, the beauty behind the trailer is that everything from in-game to actual, like, what you actually saw, it's a nice blend of it. And then when we saw it, it obviously runs extremely well at a high frame rate, and it it looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I think this part is actually just multiplayer gameplay, and they just took away the, the HUD. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks you gorgeous. See, you see him put the mask on, like, a two seconds later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've got a wide array of weapons. You got the flamethrower, which is going to be pretty sick. Definitely. I'm, I'm kind of curious if like if people are going to do high sensitivity and do 360s with flamethrowers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, someone's going to do it. Yeah, just spin around the map and just do some crazy stuff. And then melee, obviously, in this we- in this game, is going to be uh, huge. I mean, you see when you go back to 16 seconds, you see people with uh, shovels and like you see everyone equipped with a little bit of something different here. Yeah, definitely. And, like, Actually, when you mentioned that, the, the guy with the spade who smacks the other one down, he has crutches yeah. on his back. So I think that's yeah. going to be the medic class. It, it must be. You can beat the crap out of somebody with some crutches. And you saw that guy over there with a huge, looks like a minigun. Um, oh, the Gatling gun, yeah. Yeah, which is, that is pretty brutal. And you, the, also the wide array of like airplanes that you see in the background. I have no idea what those are flying in, but that's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it looks it looks insane. Definitely. What do you think about the artillery? The artillery? You it's know, I'm, uh, 48 I'm, I'm, seconds. I, I don't want it to be a mortar. I want it no. to be something like, like it's going to put pressure, but I don't want to like spawn in and then die like, like I do in BF4. And there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously there's ways to like run around and just try to be in a spot where you're not going to get mortared and nobody wants, obviously, you know what happens? And I'm not even camping. I'm always running in and I always get like a mortar point blank range and like the objective and i don't like that you know but yeah same hopefully the artillery is done well you know? yeah hopefully it's a sir it's a similar thing to what i thought of the train where you have to get control of a certain area of the map and then you're allowed to use the artillery because if it's gonna be like i don't know on, on bf4 you had a class where you could just literally choose a mini mortar as a weapon and man that's not that's not fun and then same, when you, when you look at this map here, there's a lot of melee going on. We have the air, and then you see the water there. It makes me it makes me worry about how overpowered the gunships are going to be. Like, how do you take out a gunship in World War One? Yeah, that's very, that's a very good point. I mean, I hopefully know we you have, can use maybe you can use the artillery for that. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully that's actually what is more used for. Like artillery would be a little weaker against infantry, but stronger against um. Yeah. Because, you know, Command & Conquer used to do that, actually. When you play Command & Conquer, a tank versus an infantry unit actually used to be really weak, like, because they couldn't hit them. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And I wonder if artillery would be a little bit weaker as far as, like, if it tried to, like, hit you, it just mostly kick up the dust and stuff like that and not actually have a big impact. Yeah, that would be a really good way to balance it out, actually. An example of, like, how explosions work is that it's not about the projectiles or anything. It's all about the impact and, like, the force that pushes you back that actually kills you. And so... It makes me curious of like, I mean, these guns obviously don't have that strong of an impact like modern day explosives. If the pushback is not that intense, you know. Yeah, that's very true. It's a good point. 
I mean, I guess I would need to do more research on World War One to figure that out, but that would Likewise, be a good way yeah. to balance it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That would be a really good way to do it. So what do you think? Is there anything else we should cover or we should kind of talk about our uh, our trips at this point? I think we've pretty much covered everything. I mean, it's only uh, it's only like a minute, this trailer, and there's so much stuff they show, so... Oh my god, I mean, we, we talked about it for like hours and like <laughs> yeah. days, like when we were at the, uh, at the, the trip and events, um, the people that we met, I know I tweeted out um, photos about who I was with and like who we're hanging out with and like, dude, everyone in the BF4 community or BF4, BF community in general is just, <laughs> just awesome, like seriously. It's, yeah, definitely. It was a blast. So, so how was your trip? You went to the San Francisco event, right? Yeah, and then you went to the... Uh, the one in London, right? Yeah, yeah. So we were in different locations and we got to learn a lot of different things. Um, my flight over was pretty rough, not going to lie. Um, I was sitting next to this large woman. She took like two seats and she had this like really small boyfriend. And like I was also, I'm not the tallest guy in the world either. I'm not the biggest guy. And so we're like sitting there like crammed to like the, the edges and it was terrible. But I have to say like once I got there and like once we were at the hotel, the hotel was amazing. Um and it was it was a blast and we i kind of met everyone up front everyone was so chill and relaxed and nobody had any problems with one another i don't know i don't know how to describe like it was just that's very everyone... true even though there's um i don't know how about how it was in san francisco um because it's you know so far away from europe and stuff but the one in london had so many different uh, people there like from canada new zealand finland um literally all over the world pretty much so there were a lot of different people but they all shared the same passion which is obviously battlefield so everyone got along super well and we just were talking about the game for ever yeah and like even what we saw we're sitting there speculating even further like i mean we we got there super early and all we were doing was just talking yeah exactly same for hours on the same subject then when we saw extra footage or whatever we were sitting there talking about it even more like it was just like yeah, was non-stop crazy. battlefield discussion yeah I mean, how was your flight? <laughs> it was good. I mean, I live in Amsterdam, so it's only like 45 minutes for me. So that was, that was nothing really. Um, and, and the trip was good. It was crazy hot in London, actually. So I wish I brought <laughs> shorter pants, but <laughs> it was uh, that was really good. Man. The, the, um, the area we were in, the hotel was all gorgeous. So It was actually pretty cold in California. It was around like 60, 65. You know, supposedly, you know, everyone says it's 70 all, all year round. It was pretty chilly. Yeah. And like afterwards, we all went to like this uh, bar and like uh, grill area. And let me say, Jeff, like the community manager, he is amazing. He is like his he's energy is cool like dude. he's so passionate, man. Yeah. It was it was a blast. And let me we hung outside for like hours, like just chilling awesome. like after like after we all ate together. Yeah. And then we had this one funny moment where leave it to Battlefield, guys. We, we saw this cart just like a random shopping cart and then we started coming up with stories about it and like talking like th there was some weird like attachments to it we're like look it's a battlefield 4 attachment it's dlc and like it was so strange okay like and this is really off topic but there was like a cart and like it had this like little window thing like you could kind of open up and close down but it wasn't like a lot i was like what do you use it for is that to keep your child locked in like how does that work and also it had a, it had a cup holder and it was a very large cup holder and i was like Who a, cup a cup holder in and then a cup holder in that in a, in a shopping cart? Yeah, it was the strangest thing I've ever seen. And if somebody put their cart like cup in, it obviously would have fallen through. It was it's the most it was random thing ever. It was very strange, dude. It was wow. very odd. <laughs> never heard of that. <laughs> I also got to meet uh, Dan Mitra, which who is the uh, global community manager, and the same goes for him as for Jeff. They're both like super amazing, and they put so much effort in, uh, into it for both of us to be able to attend the event. So major shout out to both of them. That's oh, really most cool. Definitely. Yeah. So I think we touched upon most things we wanted to cover, so... Yeah, and then if you guys, seriously, I know we lift out a lot, a lot. I mean, again, like I said, we can talk about this literally for days. I mean, leave your leave comments and we'll try to respond because we know a lot. If you guys have a very specific question, we'll either answer it or very vaguely dance around the question <laughs> and try to give you an answer. But we'll do the best we can. Like, if you guys have anything, I mean, we'll, we'll comment as much as possible and get something going. It's about that and we might be able to do that. All right, we'll see you guys on the battlefield. See you guys.